Tamali knew he shouldn't be out this far from the outpost, but he needed to get as many samples as he could before they left the sector. All the available transports were being used to load and move out equipment. They had been dropped off and were to call for a ride when he had collected enough samples. The war between the Sangorian factions and the Duvian Empire had started to encroach into the nearby system, and the Union was still determining its position on the conflict. Thankfully, one of the security marines volunteered, or as he said, was voluntold to be an escort in case anything happened, which Tamali highly doubted anything would. The marines had shown up about half a solar cycle ago, and thankfully stayed mostly to themselves. He had seen them around and even had conversations with a few. He liked Gunny Daniels. He seemed more intelligent than the others. Even being a new species to the Union, every race had heard by now the stories of the humans and how dangerous they are. But most still didn't believe the crazy stories they had heard. They didn't look all that dangerous, but Tamali knew that looks could be deceiving, and they were essentially unstoppable when they are determined, according to the stories. Also, their tolerance for pain and damage yet still were unparalleled by any known species. It had to be exaggerated. Tamali didn't want or need a babysitter, but if this is what he had to do to get his samples, he'd do it. Look, bro, I know you need to get your samples and all, but we're supposed to be packing up the labs, not gathering more stuff. The war between the Sangrias and the Duves is getting close to this quadrant, and we've been ordered to evacuate all the Union scientists from the outpost. Jeff said with an obvious level of annoyance. The Sangorian and Duvian empires are at war, not whatever it is you said. You were ordered to help, and I need my samples to complete my experiments. And this is the only spot in the sector that Dethalian moss is found in abundance. If the war gets here, it'll all be gone. You can go back to the outpost if you want. I don't need you here. Your species are brutes and can't comprehend what we're trying to do here. Tamali retorted, attempting to respond with the same level of arrogance the human had shown. Listen, science alien, I am a human marine, and I may not understand your science, but I will stab you in the face if you talk to me like that. But marines follow orders, and my orders are to make sure you get your samples and get back safe. So let's get what you need, and get back. Jeff responded while looking directly into Tamali's one eye. Tamali continued to search for more moss looking in corners and dark areas of the rocky outcrop they were on. He had never been this far from the research facility, but he didn't think he'd get another chance to gather materials for his research. They were going to cure the plague that was ravaging his people, and his work was important. Crawling forward to inspect a particularly hardy chunk of moss, he felt something grab him and pull him backwards with a forceful jerk. Landing on his posterior in immense pain, he saw Jeff holding his rifle, looking very intently at the ridge line. Standing over him, Jeff said, Shh, something is on the other side of this hill. What are you talking about? How can you... A hand had covered his mouth, muffling his words. Jeff gave him a glare that instantly made him feel the fear that humans have been known to inflict upon other races. Tamali remained silent. I can hear them walking around and talking. We're the only ones out this way, so it has to be something else. Stay here, I'm gonna check it out. Staying low and crawling quickly up the steep incline, Jeff made his way to the top and crept to look over. Staying there for several minutes, he later worked his way back down to Tamale. His annoyed demeanor had changed. Seriousness had taken over his voice. It's a Sangorian scouting party. Looks like around twenty or so. They are armed and heading this way. If we stay low and quiet, we can move out and get back. I'll send a transmission letting the guys know what's out here and to come and get us on our way back. Tamali knew the Sangorians' torture methods were legendary and did not want to find out firsthand what kind of pain they could unleash. Fear rushed through him. What if we just hide and call for help? They'll come and get us. They're almost two hours away because someone had to go all the way out here and get his samples. No, we have to move or they will get to us. We've never engaged with this species before, so I don't know what they are capable of. I need you to sack up and let's go. Drop the samples. The words were devoid of emotion as they left Jeff's mouth, as if a switch had been flipped and he was a machine relaying information. Confused and a bit insulted, Tamali looked back at Jeff. What is sack up? And no, I will not abandon my samples. 
Jeff, still scanning the top of the hill, said, If you want to live, you have to leave the samples and we haul ass to camp. Tamale was growing suspicious that Jeff had just made this up, because he hadn't heard anything, and was beginning to wonder if this was a ploy to get out of collecting more samples. No, I will not leave my samples, Tamale exclaimed loudly. That's when he heard it, the grunts and howls on the other side of the hill. <laughs> there were Sangorians, a lot of them. How had the human heard them earlier when Tamale didn't notice anything? Maybe some of the stories were true. The look Tamale got before paled in comparison to the cold stare Jeff shot at him this time. He was truly frozen with the overwhelming fear that if the Sangorians didn't kill him, Jeff surely would. Standing up, Jeff grabbed Tamale by the shoulder and dragged him behind a rock. Tamale was helpless to react as the strength of this human was so far beyond his own. All he could do was relent. A clicking noise came from Jeff's rifle. Stay here, he demanded. Looking down on Tamale, Jeff plainly stated, I have three magazines and two grenades, which may or may not be enough to get us through this. If I fall, you run as hard and as fast as you can that way. He gestured towards the outpost. Crouching, he moved towards the sounds of the Sangorians and found a spot behind a large boulder. Resting his rifle, he waited for them to approach. The first shots rang out as Jeff's rifle fired at the Sangorians. Tamale could hear the blasts from the Sangorians' pulse rifles hitting the rocks that were near Jeff's position. Curiosity had gotten the better of Tamale, and he had to look around the rock he was hiding under and see the battle for himself. He could see Jeff, a smile on his face, exchanging shots with the Sangorians. Creeping further out from his hiding spot, he could see six Sangorian soldiers laying dead on the rocks as more came over the hill. These humans truly were the dangerous warriors the stories told. One Sangorian was known to be a formidable fighter, and the fact that at least six were already down was a testament to that. A blast from a pulse rifle on the rock near Tamale's face sent him back cowering behind the rock. More shots rang out as the battle continued. Fuck, 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 I'm out! Jeff yelled. Fuck it! A loud explosion shook the rock Tamale was behind, followed quickly by another. Tamale peeked around the rock again. Surely the battle was over and the victor decided. Scores of dead Sangorians were strewn across the hillside, bent and twisted in odd positions. Most dead, some still dying, but more still came. This was not just a scouting party. They were moving into this solar system. Jeff was now standing, his knife in hand. A guttural scream emanated from him, and he began a charge up the hill towards the Sangorians. Ah! They stopped their advance and stared in awe as the human raced up the hill towards them, completely devoid of fear. The first Sangorian Jeff came to just stood there as the knife entered his neck. A gurgle and bubbles of purple blood gushed out, and the soldier dropped instantly. The snouted faces of the Sangorians all turned to panic as they turned and ran up the hill. Jeff continued his advance, coming to one and then the next, slicing his way through them as they fell in his wake. Coming to the top of the hill, covered in a purple mess, he stretched out his arms, looked to the sky, and yelled, Tamale believed it to be louder than the explosions heard before. All of a sudden, Jeff turned quickly, and Tamale could see the look of panic on his face. Before he could take a step, there was a large explosion at the top of the hill behind Jeff, sending him hurtling down the hill. Landing a little way from Tamale, he could see Jeff lying awkwardly. That was it. Jeff was dead. Tamale was sure until he heard a groan coming from the crumpled Jeff. Uh. Scrambling over to him, he could see Jeff was still alive and breathing, knife still in his hand. Tamale attempted to roll him onto his back. Ah, oh, motherfucker! That hurt! Jeff said, shaking his head and attempting to get his bearing, leaning forward to stand. Ow, ow, ow! God damn it, I landed funny and my back went out! Tamale was confused. His back was still there, so how had he survived the explosion in the fall? This human should have been dead at least twice over from that. What do you mean your back is out? It's still here with you. Grinning slightly, Jeff looked at Tamale. Means the muscles in my back have locked up and I can't really move. 
I can feel and move my toes so it's not broken. I can still fight, but I can't get away. You need to run now. I'll hold them off as long as I can. Tamali, still shocked by the events of the afternoon, sat there wondering how the Marine thought he could still fight and how he was not dead. If the human thought he needed to go, he should probably go. He got up to leave, but the remainder of the Sangorian forces came rushing over the hill and descended upon them. Jeff swung his blade wildly as they got close and managed to cut a few as they approached. Tamali was unable to make his escape, and they were captured. The human was dragged over the hill to the Sangorian ship, and Tamali walked by his side. Jeff defiantly muttered curses and threats all the way to the hangar of the ship. Once in the vessel, the remaining Sangorians were muttering about the amount of torture and the type to inflict on Jeff. They had suffered tremendous losses. Tamali was sure he heard a number near forty at the hand of a single human. They needed vengeance and information. If they were going to fight these things, these humans, they needed to know what they were going up against. Surely he must be a legendary fighter and not some normal human. And what was a Marine? How many were there? Eventually they decided upon the coercion harness, the most infamous of their torture devices. Watching helplessly as they carried the human down the hall into the next room, Tamali felt guilt and sorrow for the fate that awaited the human who had valiantly tried to protect him. The door slammed shut behind him, and he heard the laughter and excitement from the Sangorians on the other side. They rarely got to use the coercion harness because most species couldn't last longer than a few minutes without dying or losing their mind from the pain. Clattering and banging emanated from the other room, then Tamali heard it. The moans and groans from Jeff. He was in the harness and it had begun. He sat slumped over in the hangar. Four Sangorians stood around him, their small mouths and snouts snorting with excitement over the torture of Jeff. An hour passed, and the noise from the human in the other room stopped. During that time, worry had replaced the smiles on the Sangorian faces. Nothing had lasted a tenth of that time in the harness. If this human could sustain that much torture, what else were they capable of? The completion of the torture and the noises stopping had given them some sense of relief. At least they could be killed. There was a loud bang on the door of the hangar, and the Sangorians all perked up to look towards the noise. An explosion followed, and smoke filled the hangar. Tamali was knocked to the floor. Closing his eyes, he heard a familiar sound, and then four loud thuds next to him. Tamali, is that you? Get up. Where is Lance Corporal Sims? Dazed and disoriented from the explosion, he had trouble composing himself. Looking around, he saw that the four Sangorians were dead, and eight Marines stood in the hangar. I am Gunny Daniels. You know me. Where is the Marine who was with you? Still shook, he pointed at the door to the coercion harness room. He's dead, Tamali said softly. He was incredible. He did his best and took many of them before we were captured. The gunny's eyes narrowed and he looked at the door. We know. We saw the battle site. He gave them hell. And we're going to finish this. The Marines all raised their weapons towards the door and, without a word, lined up in formation. The gunny's hand moved quickly. The Marines all moved towards the door in silent columns. Just then, the door opened and a Sangorian stood in the doorway. Six shots at once, the Sangorian fell immediately. They rushed forward and poured through the door. Tamali heard the shots and screams of the last Sangorians. If one Marine could devastate them, then the remainder of the crew were helpless against eight of them. Tamali got up and walked towards the door. Peering through, he could see Lance Corporal Jeff Sims strapped to a table and submerged in fluid. His eyes closed. One of the Sangorians remained. The gunny told him to drain the tank and bring the table up so they could get Jeff out of the harness. He complied. The fluid was removed from the tank and the harness began elevating to floor level. The Marine they called Doc, who wasn't a Marine but they treated him like one. Apparently, Tamali wasn't sure how it worked walked over to the table and placed his hand on Jeff's throat. His eyes widened, and he said excitedly, 
He's alive. He's asleep. What the fuck? Doc shook Jeff and he began to stir. His eyes opened and in a groggy voice he said, Hey, Doc. Uh, what's up? Looking around, taking in the room, Jeff saw the rest of his squad there. Good afternoon, Gunny. Hey, guys. You come to rescue us? All the Marines had a puzzled look on their faces, but the most confused was the Sangorian. The Marines began to unstrap Jeff from the table, and Doc asked how he was feeling. I feel great. That was an amazing torture session. Ten out of ten would definitely be tortured again. The lone Sangorian stared slack-jawed, unable to believe what he was seeing. Jeff looked at his fellow Marines. Dudes, it's like a shiatsu massage chair. It presses along your back and they submerge you in heated salt water. Oh my god, it's amazing. It's seriously like a spa day thing. You guys need to try it out. Smiling and looking around, Jeff then asked, Can we keep the chair? Tamali, who was hiding by the door, chimed in. How has any of this been possible? I watched you tear through their soldiers, and then not only survive their most brutal torture, but seemed to be better for it. I thought your back had left. He had come to realize now that, yes, all of the stories were true. These humans were unstoppable. Yeah, my back went out after the rocket they launched at me blew me down the hill. The chair must have massaged it back into place or whatever. It feels fine. You guys seriously need to try this chair, he said, gesturing towards the now empty coercion harness. The Marines looked at the Sangorian who did not know how to react and simply stood still in the presence of such formidable creatures. The gunny then raised his pistol and placed it against the head of the Sangorian. Turn it back on. I want to try it. The Marines trained their weapons on the alien, and the gunny entered the harness. After roughly half an hour, he got up and agreed with Jeff that this chair was awesome, and they all needed to try it. Each Marine took a turn, and they spent the remainder of the evening in the Sangorian ship. Tamali apologized to Jeff, realizing the mistake he made in angering him earlier and alerting the Sangorians to their position. Jeff had no hard feelings, and said the afternoon was actually a blast and the best massage he had ever had, so it all worked out. In the morning they left, allowing the Sangorian to live and tell his people about what had occurred the previous day. A few weeks later, the Sangorian and Duvian emissaries came to the Union Council, begging to be allowed in. If the humans were in the Union, then they obviously couldn't win any fight against them. The Sangorians then began opening what humans called spa days on Earth and in other areas where humans were heavily populated. The Sangorian spa has now become a popular destination for humans looking to relax and experience the benefits of what was once used as a torture device. Marines, of course, receive a 20% discount at all establishments.